ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Retro Gaming with Hopper. And as always, thank you for watching. Today we're going to get started on the electronics on this. Uh, we did go through and we serviced all the boards. But we did run into a few problems on our driver board. We have a couple of uh, transistors that are bad in here. And we're going to change them out today. Uh, this, like I said, this is a System 6 Williams 1980 Scorpion wide body. Uh, we went through, um, power supply is working, but I did order a cap kit. I'm going to replace the caps anyway, just to make sure that they're, they're good. And let's see what else is going on in there. Not much. When I first fired this up, my score units were all blank. <clears throat> so I looked at everything and I pushed on my chips and I got a reaction and that's when we got all the lights and everything to come on. So we're going to take that MPU back out and we're going to clean all those contacts on the chips and we're also going to check all the sockets and make sure we don't have a cold solder joint on the sockets. And we'll check everything out again on those two to see if we can't get our all of our lights lit if you remember we have uh, I think one I think it's the the five and eight that's dead on the playing field and uh, there's a couple of other ones up top here I, I'm just I have this laying here just to protect it so I'm when I'm working on there I'm not I don't drop anything on the playing field and hopefully we can get all of our lights and get our solenoids to work. Uh, I tried putting it in test mode and it'll test some of the lights but it won't test my solenoids or anything else like that. So that's what I'm thinking we do have a problem up here on the MPU with maybe a um, cold solder on one of the sockets or the chips are dirty. So we'll get that cleaned up. But the lights and that are on the driver board and that's what we're going to start out with first. I'll pull that back out get it on the bench and I'll show you the ones that I'm going to be changing. Now we got the transistors replaced. I had this one. That's the one that was stone dead. I had nothing on either side of that one. This row here I had oh I had a few all but one of them was uh, either just over uh, or was just really close so I decided I just went ahead and replaced all of them so it would be more reliable. I went ahead and I checked all the resistors. All the resistors are good. I run on every one of these up through here. All the transistors, I checked everything all again while I have it out. So when I do put it back in this time, that we're not pulling it back out unless we do have a problem with one of our chips. Which hopefully we don't. I checked all of these. Everything is good on this board now. Everything checks out. So hopefully once we put this in, we're not going to have to be pulling this back out. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull the MPU back out. Uh, when we first went and serviced all these, I just did all the pins and all that so we could get, get the lights to come on on it so we could work on it. And now I'm going to pull that MPU out again. And this is something I should have done the first time I had this board out. Was I'm going to pull, pull our chips and clean all the chips. Clean all the legs on the chips and check all that out. And that way we know that, okay, now we're making good contact with our, our chips. I'll check the sockets, uh, check the back sides and all that. Make sure everything's all connected like it should we don't have any broken traces or somebody else hasn't been in there and kind of muddled things up. So once I pull the pull this out, then we'll put it on the bench and we'll take a look at it again and I'll show you what I'm you know, we'll start pulling chips is what I'm gonna do. Now on a lot of these chips, a lot of guys use the those little screwdrivers or those little lifters. And I always ended up with bent pins. 
unless you, you know if you can work both sides it's okay but I use a chip lifter chip puller these things are they're very inexpensive you can pick them up on eBay or Amazon check my link down below and you have little hooks on either end and you just get under the chip on either end I know you can't see real good and then just lift up and there's your chip and none of your legs are bent sometimes you'll get uh, one on the end that gets a little bent because just if you're pulling up a little bit on an angle and you'll get a little bit of a you'll bend one of them I don't know what the hell this is huh. I think some sort of dust bunny lying under there in wait and then I just take a little a piece of 400 grit sandpaper and just lightly polish those legs up top and bottom or underneath whichever you want to call them like so and same thing and what I forgot to mention is when you're when you're pulling your chips always make sure the orientation of it sorry about that I'm kind of concentrating a little bit here see there's a little notch right there on the edge of your pin or on the edge of your chip make sure what orientation that is I knew all three of these game chips were pointing this way so that's why I went ahead and pulled it without mentioning it I already pulled the big one and you can see I noticed I noted that the, the little notch was pointing towards the Williams sticker the RAM chip, same thing, was pointing towards the connector. So when I pulled them, cleaned them, and then I knew exactly how they went back in. You didn't have to go find out. And then when you put them back in, it's, you, it's pretty easy. You just get them lined up. You'll feel the chip kind of slide down in a little bit. And then you can push them right down in. That's all you have to do to clean those clean socketed chips. I'll pull these other two chips and get them cleaned and we'll turn it over and check the back side again. I want to check the, the sockets on these and make sure they're they're soldered in good. If I run into anything unusual I'll bring you bring you back and show you what I had found. So let me get these two cleaned up and we'll be ready to just about ready to put it back in. Maybe I can get you a little better angle on how I do pull them. Like I said, I got these two little pins. Note your orientation. Your notch is facing out here towards the ground. You just put those two little pins right under the chip. Center it a little bit and just pull up. And there's your chip. Same thing. So I'll get him cleaned up and I'll pull the other one and we'll be ready to check on some other things. Okay, now while we're in the back there, uh, we're going to recap the power supply. It's really amazing how much smaller the new caps are compared to the old ones of 1980. I mean, this is, you know, that's a third <laughs> the size of the original. And same with the high voltage ones. I mean, you see how big they are. And that's the replacement. It's really amazing how much technology has come. Well, but, yeah, I guess, 40 years. And 40 years to perfect 
the design and and start making things a heck of a lot smaller. So that's why you can make make circuit boards a lot smaller is because the components are a lot smaller. So I'll go ahead and recap this and then our power supply will be completely done. We won't have to worry about it either. Okay, we got all of our boards back in. I replaced all those MOSFET or all those transistors like I said I showed you. Uh, rebuilt the or <laughs> rebuilt the power supply. Got that all recapped. Soundboard is recapped. Cleaned all the uh, chips and sockets on the MPU. So now we're ready to turn it on. What we want to do is we got these two little LEDs here and here. We're going to watch those and see what happens. Those should flash and stay on. Let's see they flashed. We get one flash and that's it. But the machine does go into attract mode. See all of our lamps are lit now. And our displays all working. We didn't have any problems with them. Uh, the high score is 500 500,000. And there's five games on it, but nothing. See the flash, the single flash on the MPU means that the game is booting, but it's not going any further. So we do know that the, the MPU is working. So what we do is we, we're going to... Uh, I'll put this in test mode. Uh, push the center button down to manual. First button up here, which is the advance. Lights, everything should go out except the general illumination. And then the, the next one, which is 1, or 00 anyway. That's our first test. That's our displays. Displays are working fine. Uh, leave it up on advan on regular as it's cycling. Next test is our light test. We know all of our lights are working. Next test is our solenoid test and see uh, we're not getting anything on our solenoids but our flippers work so um, we still have a problem with our solenoids that the uh, MPU is going through when it flashes once uh, it's trying to test everything but Solenoids are not working. Next test, test three, is our switch test. And we have, I think we have a couple of them that are, like 31 is stuck. We'll get after that, we'll find it. But, uh, you know, you see, this is 20. Next one is 21, 15, 14. 18, 19. So it's testing the switches and the switches are working. So that part of the test is good. The only thing I don't get anything on is our pop bumpers. Our thumpers. I can't make them, can't test the switches on those. So it could very well be that, hmm, no, not really. But I think what's going on is we're still having problems with our solenoids. 
the solenoid size. See, that's 38, 17. Uh, mostly all of our switches are working. 43, 44, 45. Yeah, we've still got to adjust a few of them. So we need to take the solenoid board back out and start looking at it again. I do believe that's where our problem is. Next test, number f that's number three. Number four is our audits, you know, showing us uh, the one, four, nine, one, four, nine, four. That's uh, the 494 is the na uh, number of the game. This is the uh, 494th game that was made by Williams and the 1 meaning revision 1. The 1, um, I can't remember what the hell that, that one is. But that, that 1494, that's, that's nothing. Everything else you're going to go through is going to be your audits, uh, like your high score, your, you can, uh, there's one of them on here, I think it's either 13, no, I think that's the high score, one of them, 18, no, nope. you can set your high score, you know, you can change the high score, whatever, it, it is what it is, and Let's see. Yep. And your center button is just your up and down. You can go, for, you know, this way or back up. That's the only test that you have on this. But uh, we get to the solenoid test, and it will not test any of the solenoids. So I'm figuring we still have a problem with our solenoid driver board we need to check some more connections I guess clean some more stuff up I don't know we're we're gonna get after it and see what the hell we can find okay now we have our solenoids uh, are working on test fire on the test so uh, what I did was I went through and I checked everything uh, with the machine up and running uh, I put it in test mode and started with uh, solenoid one and check my pulses. Uh, I had my pulse on my PIA. Uh, my yeah, pulse on my PIA, which is this chip right here. I had pulse on number two, which number two is um, solenoid one. And then we come down, and I checked it on my 408, and it was good, and all the way over, and we had a pulse on on our uh, contact or contact on our plug but still the solenoid wouldn't fire so on uh, on the William system 6 the the ground wire is what triggers the solenoid you have 40 volts at your solenoid all the time and your your ground is what triggers the, the solenoid to work and on the system six, uh, that is called blanking. Let me get the. Okay. Uh, there's not enough light here. There, that's better. Okay. This is our, this is the drawing of the solenoid and the driver board, lamp driver board. This side over here is your solenoids. I wish I could, I wish I could get a little better light over here. Okay, anyway. This is our solenoids special solenoid up top flippers lamps switches number four PIA is uh, solenoid PIA 
this is the switch belt uh, PIA. So we come in. I'm going to try and explain this the best I can. Here's our solenoid PIA. PIA number four. Uh, here's number one pin, and then number two pin is our number one solenoid. Let me get get to the right one here. Okay, PIA four. Number two pin, which is up here, goes to follow it all the way up to. It goes to IC1, which IC1 is, oh, yeah, IC1 is right here, which is that little guy right there, the one up and down. Okay, and our pulse goes up and then comes out, and it also sends a pulse to all the other ones. It goes through the IC1 which is a 7408 come back over to this the drawing and number two pin right here comes down across and hits a resistor here and is connected to Q14 which Q14 is the one right there, the one on the end. And it sent a pulse out to our plug. So I knew we had the pulse, which was a high pulse, which is supposed to be a high pulse. And I did some research and what triggers it is the blanking circuit. Blanking circuit, back to our schematic here blanking circuit you can see it right there comes in from sheet 2 I guess we should start to where solenoid okay blanking comes in on uh, IC4 but actually it comes in up here on the fourth pin in comes in our signal comes in, goes to the PIA, and then out. And you run this back, I see four, which is the one on the bottom. Uh, I see four pin 13, which is up underneath. We had our signal. It runs all the way down and up to up to IC14 which is this one all the way here in the back and we had our signal there so all of our signals were there it just wouldn't trip it wasn't tripping tripping so I went I just went all the way back to the MPU and see here's our blanking circuit blanking circuit is right there under the sticker you can see the test pin that is test pin 4 Test pin 4 in operating mode. Normal operation should be 5 volts with a pulse. And it did. Test pin 5, which is part of our... our uh, that's part of the blanking. And you can see this has a quicker pulse. And it did. And our test pin 6, which is in that same area, had even a quicker pulse. So we went all the way back and test pin 4 should run high in operation. Test pin 5, 5 volt with a pulse. Here's our and you can see pulse. Test pin 6, 5 volt with even a quicker pulse and you can see it's pulsing even quicker so our blanking circuit is working it comes in and then goes over to that pin 14 or wait a minute excuse me 
getting a little ahead of myself comes in and goes to the PIA chip and then it sends everything or no the blanking damn you get me all confused the blanking circuit comes in goes to uh, chip 14 and then around and chip 4 let me get back here to chip 4 when it comes in you can see it comes in here and then comes out and connects to Q4. Q4, it should connect, it will connect to all of them, but that is our trigger. Everything was good. We had our trigger signal at, or not a trigger signal, but we had our signal at the, at the plug, but nothing was happening. It wouldn't trip our solenoids. So I got to thinking, okay, I checked the fuse. Fuse was good. Uh, this is our solenoid side. I checked our volt. Uh, well, I didn't check my voltage yet. I checked my fuse. My fuse was good. Sorry about that. Just drew a, a straight assed blank. The rectifier. This is our solenoid rectifier. And the one on the other side is our lamp rectifier. This one here, top and bottom is AC. I had my AC power coming in, which was fine. Uh, we had our 40 volts coming out and our ground. Everything was working on our rectifier. And follow these up and they plug into here. And they go through the fuse and out to the, to the plug and then out to your solenoids down on the playing field. I had pulled that fuse tested it with a uh, ohm meter and it was fine. Put it back in. Uh, I had checked my pins. No 40 volt. Nothing. Check the top. 40 volt. Check the bottom. 40 volt. Top. Nothing. With the volt meter. Pulled that fuse out. Tested it again. It was fine. Put it back in and it did not so I put a brand new fuse in and lo and behold we have our 40 volts here and down to our solenoids and we have our triggers working. So all that screwing around, well not really screwing around, you, I learned a lot. You always learn a lot when you're working with schematics. I learned a lot off of those and how the System 6 system works as far as uh, the blanking line is what triggers the solenoids. So that's all working now. Now when we put it in test mode our solenoids fire. But <laughs> yes there's another big but and I mean it's a big but just like this machine. We still don't have our two lights. They still go off. Okay we'll shut it off. turn it on we have one flash and nothing. On the system six there should flash once and then come on and stay on. Both of them should stay on meaning that the game is operational ready to go. We get the one flash and after that it it means that the CPU is booting up. So we still have a problem somewhere. Went through and I tested all the solenoids And this is what I come up with. Uh, the number one test is the inner outer ball hole which is this guy right in here. Then we have right bottom drop targets, left uh, bottom drop targets, upper right drop targets, upper or upper left, upper right, outer ball kicker which it did this one again so I'm thinking we might have something going on there. Then the middle one, which is uh, the one right in here, since this is a multi-ball game, uh, the first ball come in, it kicks it over to here and then waits. When that one drains, it kicks that one out, you play that one. Then when it comes time to play multi-ball, it kicks them both. We'll go over that when we get to play it. Alright, where are we at? Drop targets, okay. Outer ball kicker, that one there, that one, or... 
that guy right in there. Move that. And then number seven. Whoop, wait a minute. Outer ball kicker. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then the middle ball kicker. Those both worked, and then we have our right hole, left hole, both of those working. And then nothing from 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. On 15, we have a, all, all it happens is our lights flash. Test 17 is a pop bumper, worked. Pop bumper and pop bumper. Number 20 uh, was nothing. And then 21 and 22 is our uh, our left and right kicker. So now what we have to do is find, I need to pinpoint, you know, what these ones are. The 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 could be uh, the special solenoids, which this machine doesn't have any special solenoids on it. This is just, just a straight has solenoids. Uh, special solenoids will be like... Um, Oh, when you have different gates that open and close all the time and stuff like that. There's just some weird things that happen that's not in your normal play. Uh, the lights flash, uh, That I'm not sure what that is. That could be reset or something. I'm, I don't know. And then uh, number 16, we never heard our knocker. That could be our knocker. And then the number 20 is blank. So I don't know. Uh, I went through, I, I checked everything as far as I counted and watched every one of them. Now, number 20, I don't know, it's nothing. It could be another one of those special solenoids. Either 16 or 20 is our knocker. And if you remember, uh, a couple of videos back, our knocker was unsoldered. One of the wires has been broken off. So we're going to replace that. We'll get that fixed and then see if we pick up either 16 or 20 and go from there. But we I don't know, we're still not booting up fully. There's still something going on in the boot sequence. But let's get that solenoid fixed and then we can go from there. Okay, I got that uh, solenoid, the knocker solenoid wired back up and now let's let's run through a test here that's our displays all our displays look really good that's all of our lights all of our lights are working okay that's one which is this outer hole, but I don't know. I... Okay. Number two, drop target. Number three. Number four. Five. Six. Oops. See, there's six. Seven. There's our kicker. Kicker. Oh. And that is number nine. Left hole. Nope. That was two I got mixed up. So nine's dead. No ten. No eleven. 12, 13, 14, there's our knocker, 14, okay, 14 is a knocker, 15, like I said, there's, I don't know what that is. Sixteen, nothing. Hot bumper. 
bottom, top, right, turn the page, we're on 20, which is another blank, left kicker, right kicker, Go back to one. Okay. Not sure what test. Oh, test three is our switches. Test four just gives us a bunch of information and some stuff that we can set up, like our high score and games. You know, you can set it on free play. Okay, so now, now that we have all of our solenoids working, that we can, you know, that you see, that I know of, those are all working, now we can start figuring out why it won't come out of, why it won't boot up to play a game. Okay, folks, guess what? We actually figured out why it wouldn't start a game. Uh, I did some research and then I was uh, talking to a few people and they reminded me that both balls had to be in the machine in order to start a game. So I put both balls in and we had nothing. So I went to the switch test and once you get to the switch test, if you press the start key or button, three should come up telling you that all switches tested good. Well, I was. I was getting a three. Now, you do that test without any of the balls in in the machine. Do that test and you press the start and you should get a three. Test three and then it should come up three. I'll show you here in a little bit. And it would come up three. So all my switches were good. You put the balls in. Put a ball in here and over here you should have the two in because this is a multi-ball system now you should press the you should be able to press the start and you should get a nine and a ten meaning those two switches are closed well with both balls in only switch nine was it nine or ten uh, here I got a cheat sheet here Look at this guy. This is solenoid. We'll be using that here shortly. Uh, solenoid connections. You can see I've been downloading a lot of stuff trying to get a lot of this stuff figured out on this machine because you need all this. Okay, switch nine is ball ramp thrower which is this guy, ball ramp thrower. And then number 10, I don't know if you can, how good this is coming out, uh, ball ramp, which is the one here. There's a ramp in there, okay, shoots it over the ramp, and then the ball th comes out to the thrower ramp, or, yeah, thrower ramp, right? Uh, is it a throw, what they call thrower ramp? Eject hole, nope, wrong one, there it is ball ramp thrower okay here's your ball ramp and that's your thrower okay so what was going on is switch 9 was come showing closed but switch 10 wasn't so I checked switch 10 which is this one here and it had a busted diode on it I replaced the diode put the ball in and lo and behold, it started again. So now, you can actually hit the start button. One game, first ball. And there's our ball. Okay, I have the sound turned off right now. I'll show you here in a minute why I have the sound turned off. because we're going to 
we need to do some adjustments on our settings. Right now, it's letting you go through past ball 10 and the game never ends. So we have to get in and work on that. Somebody has been really trying to figure out this game and never really got it figured out. And that's why it went and I got I picked it up. So we're slowly and finally getting everything all worked out on this machine. You can hear the transformer hum. And that's a filter cap. Now when I'll have to figure out where that filter cap is why we're getting a transformer hum through our speaker. Usually that's a filter cap. Now our volume, I don't know if you can see all the way back in there. Let me see if I you can see this long rod sticking out right right here. That's our volume control. You turn that up and all you get is static. I mean you can hear the sound in there. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> but so we know the sound's working. I don't know if you can hear it through all that noise. Okay, so our sound is working. Oh, let me turn it now. So in our next episode, we're going to work on the sound on this thing. But this, we just got this all up and running. Now we just need to do some adjustments in our settings and I think I'll just do a video on the settings on this machine I know I'm these uh, I got lots of episodes on this machine well there was a lot that was wrong with it and we did a lot to it uh, I had to put the old rubbers back on because I just I ordered this stuff before Christmas and with the Christmas and New Year's, everything was shut down. Finally got our rubber kit. So I'll do that off camera. You don't need to see me put a rubber kit on. I mean, everybody puts a rubber kit on. And let's see, what else did I get? Uh, today I got the, the clear plastic hole inserts that go down in there. But I was going to put those in, but I think I've decided that I like the yellow, the lit yellow in there better. So we're going to leave that alone. And I got a set of scorecards back here for it because we didn't get any. And yes, I'm going through 45s for jukeboxes. And no videos on that unless uh, somebody wants to. If you post, you want a video of me going through um, 45s, I'll. I'll post a video of uh, going through 45s. Uh, this is only the third box, and I'm not even all the way through a third box of my 45s. And I think I have six or eight more boxes of 45s to go through. Uh, going through, picking out all the good ones that I want to save for jukeboxes. And then there's a lot of old stuff that um, I'll go through again. Because if I get a really old jukebox, I'd love to put just regular, real old records in it. But uh, I have an 80s Rockola sitting here. And it, that's perfect. I sit here and work on pinball machines and listen to the Rockola uh, jukebox. <laughs> Why not? Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Uh, if you didn't enjoy it, hit the thumbs down. I don't care. Hell, at least that's some activity on my videos. And if you haven't subscribed and you want to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell and that will give you notifications of my new videos coming out. Like I said, this has been a kind of a long-winded series, but I've got a lot of stuff going on with this. Uh, we still, we're still not completed. We still have to work on the soundboard. And hopefully it's just the, the volume control. We still need to work on our pop, our drop targets. I mean, we, we still got a long ways to go on this thing. We still got to work on that door. That wire's hanging off of it and all kind of stuff going on in here. So we'll 
have some fun with that too. I may do videos of that, maybe not, I don't care, you know, I don't know. Like I said, nobody's watching the damn videos anyway, and then when they do, they don't go this far anyway. So, whatever. So until next time, see ya.